Welcome! This video will be an introductory overview of how to design, program, and operate lights using EOS family consoles. Currently, I am using the ETC Nomad software on a computer, but everything is essentially the same as on the board itself, except for the fact that I don't have any physical buttons or faders. If you want to download and follow along with the ETC Nomad software, which I highly recommend, there is a tutorial on how to do so at the end of this video, and you can also download all of the show files that I am using through the links below this video. To begin, there are some basic concepts to understand. First, we'll discuss the two main types of light fixtures that you might come across. Conventional lights are ones that use incandescent bulbs that work in a similar way to those you would find in a house. For our purposes, with conventional fixtures, there is one parameter that can be controlled by the light board, intensity, which defines how bright the fixture is. Full intensity means that the light is at its brightest, and no intensity, or zero intensity, means that the light is turned off, and of course you can have any level in between. The way that they are controlled is that the light board sends intensity data to a dimmer, which controls how much power is sent to the light, thereby changing how bright it is. LED fixtures are much more versatile, mostly in the fact that they can emit colored light. They have more parameters that can be controlled, including the separate color channels, red, green, and blue, used for mixing color, and many also have a variety of other potential parameters. For now, we'll focus mostly on conventional fixtures and some basic LED fixtures. Now that we know what the two main types of fixtures are, we can look at how to identify and control them. On this console, and with most lighting control systems, every light fixture is assigned a number, which is used to identify and control it. For example, channel 1 might be a fixture in the front of house electric, and channel 32 might be a light hung over the stage. Of course, the number of fixtures and setup will vary by theater, but you can generally expect for there to be anywhere from 30 to 80 fixtures in a small to mid-sized theater. These numbers can also be changed to add or remove fixtures, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now that we have an idea of how lights are controlled, we can start taking a look at the different workspaces and tabs available on the console. Some setups will have two or more monitors, but you can operate sufficiently with just one. First, you have three different workspaces that you can choose from and modify. Use the buttons in the upper left hand corner to switch between them. When opening an unused workspace, you will see the big plus button. After clicking that, you will see a variety of different displays to choose from. In the top left, you have a list of different window configurations, which will allow you to have up to four different displays open on the same workspace in several different shaped configurations. I'm going to open up a workspace with two windows, and let's choose to open up a magic sheet and the color picker, for example. To switch between workspaces, you simply click on the desired number in the left hand corner. If you want to change an existing workspace, then you click on the furthest left icon, which will allow you to change or reconfigure the current workspace. We will now look at some of the most common displays that you will use. Live tables show all of the different lighting channels and relevant data about them. They are very helpful for getting a general overview of the status of most of your lights. You can also click to select certain channels if you want to make changes. An active table will only show fixtures which have been used since the last time the fixtures were reset, or, more simply, the channels that have data currently being sent to them, and a normal table will show all of the channels, regardless of status. You can find this table here. A magic sheet serves as a diagram of the stage that you can create, which is super useful for quickly locating and editing channels. You can easily select the different fixtures and drag to select multiple at the same time. To make changes to a magic sheet, press the arrow on the right hand side of the window. This will allow you to drag in new fixtures and objects, alter the target or channel number of existing objects, or rearrange their position. Having an accurate and up to date magic sheet will make programming lights much easier and more efficient. Now that we know how to locate and select various fixtures, we can begin looking at how to turn on and design lights. We use the command line to send various commands to the lights about what actions they should perform. For example, if I want channel 2 to turn on to full intensity, then I type 2, at, full, and press enter. Currently I am using the virtual keyboard within the Nomad software to mimic the locations of the keys on the light board itself, but you can also use your computer keyboard by pressing, for example, 3, the letter A for at, 
the letter F for full, and the enter or return key. You can see what key on your keyboard each button on the lightboard will correspond to in the bottom corner of the virtual keyboard for quick editing. If I want to dim channel 2 to only 50% intensity, then I can type 2 at 50 enter. And this works for all different channels. For example, I can type 100 at full enter, and this will turn on channel 100 to full. Instead of having to remember and type the channel number in by hand, the magic sheet is very useful for selecting the desired lights. As you select fixtures on the magic sheet, it will automatically load the channel numbers into the command line as you select them. This is also useful for editing multiple lights at once. You can also use the clear button or delete key on a computer to clear the command line of any residual arguments or if you make a mistake. To turn a light out, select the light and click the out button. If you want to turn all of the lights out, you can click the Go to Cube button and then click Out. This is very useful for turning all the lights off when you're preparing to turn the system off, or if you need to start with a blank slate. If you want to edit a continuous range of lights, for example 1 through 10, then you can type 1 through 10 at full Enter. You can also use the plus or minus buttons to include or exclude certain fixtures from your range. For example, 1 through 10 minus 3 at out turns off all lights except for channel 3. You can now work on designing a look for your show. Once you have designed a look that you are happy with, you want to be able to save it so that we can play it back later. So, we will record it as a queue. We will now open up the playback status window, which is a sequential list of all the queues that we have recorded. You can see that right now we don't have any queues. This screen has several columns, all of which can be customized. The queue column all the way on the left displays the queue number. The duration column displays the duration of the queue or how long it takes to be activated. The label column can be used to add a short string of text describing the queue or when it should be triggered. The FX column will indicate which, if any, effects are running during the queue. You can also customize the columns that are available to you by double-clicking or control-clicking on the tab. You can see that there are many different ones available. You can customize this to fit your needs. Since we now have a look that we are pleased with, we can record this. We do so by pressing Record, Q, and assigning it a number. We'll start with 1. Enter. It's always important to label the queue so you know what it is used for or when it should be triggered. You can label a queue by clicking in the label column next to the queue or by using the label key on the lightboard. Once you have this queue recorded, you can now change the lights to design your next queue. When you're happy with how that queue looks, you can then press record, queue, and then assign a number, just like before. Queue should be recorded sequentially by one, so our next queue in the sequence will be queue number two. Press enter, and now you have recorded queue two. The duration of a queue can also be changed by pressing the time key and by typing in a new time in seconds. A duration of five means that the queue fades in over five seconds from the previous one, while a duration of zero means that the queue will change instantly. I'm going to go ahead and record a few more cues for us to work with. As with any computer, it is important to save your work. You can access the file browser and setup window on the console by pressing the triangle in the bottom right hand corner. Under the file drop down, you have several options to both save, save as, and open files. For now, we'll simply save the file. This is also the window that you will use to open up different show files. 
Now that we have several cues recorded, we can look at how to play through the cues. Our Go to Cue button that we used earlier is super useful for navigating between cues in a non-sequential order. To get back to the first cue, I'll do Go to Cue 1, Enter. Now we can use the Go or Play button, which should be one of the largest buttons on the board, to progress through the cues. By pressing the Go button, you will activate the next cue and it will fade in according to the amount of time specified in the duration column. This is how the lights will be controlled during a performance. If you need to go back a cue, you can press the back button. If you press the back button while a cue is transitioning, then it will pause that transition. From there, if you press the go button again, it will continue the transition from where it left off. If you press the back button instead, it will move back to the previous cue. To delete a cue, press delete, cue, type the cue number, and then press enter. If you realize that you need to add a cue between two already existing cues, which is a common occurrence, you can add a decimal to the cue number, for example, record cue 3.1, enter. To practice editing LED lights, I have opened up the LED version of the sandbox file that is provided below. LED lights are different in that they have several parameters which can be controlled. Similar to conventional lights, you can change their intensity, which affects their brightness. You can also mix color. The easiest way to do this is by opening up the color picker window, which contains a wide variety of preset colors and a color mixer. Just like with intensity, you can select a fixture and then select the desired color. Both the color and intensity data will be recorded in cues, which follows the same process as with conventional fixtures. That concludes the basics of programming, designing, and operating lights for EOS family consoles. To download the ETC Nomad software, go to the link in the description and select the most recent version of the software available. Once you have it installed on your computer, launch it and you will most likely see a screen that looks something like this. This will allow you to choose whether you want to use the Element or EOS version of the software. For our purposes, there are no significant differences between the two, so just select the one that corresponds to your console. I'll be using the Element version for today. Once you have reached this screen, you can choose the offline button, which will take you into the software. Your screen will most likely look different from mine, but we'll discuss how to configure your screens in this tutorial. Nomad will automatically open up the most recent show file you opened when you launched the software, so if you're opening it up for the first time, you won't have any show file open or lights set up. You can download the show files that I'm using through the links below, which include both a conventional and all LED rig. To use the show files, download them and place them in the folder called Show Archive so that the software can locate them and save new versions in the same location. You can find this folder under Documents, ETC, EOS, Show Archive. To open a show, in the navigator in the software, go to File, Open, select the location of your show file, and then double click on the show file itself. Once you see a screen that looks like this, go ahead and click OK, ensuring that all of the boxes are highlighted and outlined in yellow. The show file should now be open.